What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So in today's video, uh, we are talking about the 5th anniversary Sugo Fest once again. Um, big shout out though to Ghetto Stepper for creating the infographic. I was I was expecting someone to create an infographic once we did get the news um, about the brand new Sugo Fest, including the rate boost and stuff. So in this video today, we're going to be talking about the Sugo Fest as a whole now that we know every single bit of detail. Well, I guess aside from the rates of the Sugo Go Fest, which we will know tomorrow, right? Um, so uh, I will be live streaming. I will be doing Sugo Fest pulls. Probably should say, say that out, right? Of course, many people would know that at this point. I am going to be doing Sugo Fest pulls, despite how bad this Sugo Fest may seem to many people. Um, look, looking at it right now, I think that the Kaido Sugo Fest is not a bad Sugo Fest. When you look at it compared to previous other Sugo Fest that we've had. With everything taken into account, this is not a bad Sugo Fest. What this is though, it is a bad anniversary Sugo Fest. And there's obviously many reasons behind that. I've talked about it in extensive length, not only in other videos, but on my live streams as well. For many, many reasons, this Sugo Fest is definitely not as impressive, especially to last year and even the year before that. Many, many reasons for that is because of, you know, less discounts, no exclusive units. It just seems a very plain, boring Sugo Fest. And, and that's the main, you know, gripe that many players have with this Sugo Fest. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into this infographic. Once again, shout out to Ghetto Stepper for creating the infographic uh, of, of uh, you know, the, the different limited pools for the uh, brand new Sugo Fest. So let's go ahead and start things off. So part one, which is actually going to be starting tomorrow. So part one, Limited Pool Legends includes Kaido, Bullet, V2 Mihawk, VV and Rebecca, Whitebeard and Marco, V2 Katakuri, Catdog, and Legend Guard. So this is definitely one major thing that we need to talk about. I don't know why Garp is boosted here. I understand that some players don't have Legend Garp, but for endgame players that are going to be going to these Limited Pool lists, no one wants to be doing 10, 12, 15, 18, 20 multi pools for Legend Garp. Um, I think that Legend Garp should have definitely been replaced, or if not dropped, quite honestly. I think that considering the structure of this Sugo Fest, and you know, that's been a big talking point, considering the structure here, I do think that the limited pool list should have been restricted even further. I think they should have probably restricted it to six characters rather than eight, but when you still compare it to the Japanese side of things, for their Kaido Sugo Fest, their limited pool list was like 12 characters, maybe even more than that. So it was definitely a little bit more diluted for them. Um, but again, it really does come down to what are the rates for these characters. Um, we have seen in many Sugo Fests in the past, whenever they, you know, rate up uh, some of these older characters like Garp, um, you know, V2 Jinbei, which sees a lot uh, of, of rate boosts, um, Legend Brook, which is also in this Sugo Fest as well, just some other characters that people don't really want, they typically rate boost them very, very high. Even if you just look at the pre-anniversary Sugo Fest, um, only Legends within the past 12 months were in that Legend pool, but still, when you look at the actual rates, characters like Legend Zephyr was actually boosted, um, um, in in that list, which is pretty absurd, right? It's it's kind of weird the way that they structured it So it really does, it does come down to that, you know I hope I really really hope considering everything, you know with the terrible structure the rate boost looking pretty average I do hope that Kaido is the highest rate boosted legend in the Sugo Fest Knowing Bandai though and how they structure Sugo Fests on global. That's likely not going to be the case I just sincerely hope that it is though. I mean, can we please go back to like the V2 German batch when they released um, Sanji and Judge were the highest rated legend on part one. Uh, even going back to V2 Mihawk and V2 Zoro, that Sugo Fest was phenomenal. I even talked about it on the Good Great Perfect uh, podcast. If you guys haven't seen that yet, make sure you go ahead and peep that. But even on that podcast, I even mentioned that as well. Like the V2 Mihawk and Zoro Sugo Fest was one of the best Sugo Fest on global, to be quite honest. It was the fact that it was quite restricted. You had those multi pools where you could only pull characters of a certain class, which means that if you got a red, you got like very specific legends. It was it was really really good. And plus, the debut legends were the highest rated legends that you could pull on the banner. Just everything about that Sugo was awesome. And unfortunately, we don't get anything like that here. But we have to see what the rates are like. I'm not expecting it to be that good though. Um, and then talking about the rare recruits for part one. So you've got the new batch, of course, stock standard. You've got the dual unit, Mr. Zero and uh, Missile Sunday. Opera, Aladdin, Daifuku, Perospero, Sanji, and also uh, Merigold. So I believe, yeah, all these characters work under Kaido. So it makes sense why they are boosting these units. But saying that though, 
I think that a better idea would have been to just boost some of the more recent characters that were, you know, released. You know, the Stampede batches with, you know, Brooke, Robin, Chopper, and then the one with Nami, Frankie, and Zoro. Those characters should have been boosted. Are they even boosted at all? No Stampede units are boosted. Okay, that's a little strange. I will admit that is a little strange. Um, but before that, even like the waifu batch units, um, you know, I think that they really should have changed some of the structures here because it, it, you can see what they're doing. They're trying to give you units that work well with Kaido, but you've got to pull Kaido in the first place, right? I mean, yes, you can still use, use him as a friend captain and all that, but it's just not great because especially for stuff like this, multi two and five it's guaranteed to be a rate boosted character which means it's guaranteed to be one of these units right so it's still a really low chance to get a character that you want if you get a red poster it's guaranteed to be one of these units if you get a gold it's guaranteed to be one of these units so yeah look for an anniversary sugar fest it's not great but as i said in terms of just regular sugar fests it is still good um but talking about part one just overall you've got kaido which is fantastic uh you've got bullet amazing Mihawk, not so much. He doesn't really see as much play. He's not a terrible legend, but it's just the fact that the other characters are more versatile, you can use more characters with them, uh, they're easier to team build with, and just overall are better characters. Um, the, the V2 Mihawk is not a terrible unit uh, by any means. Vivi Rebecca, one of the best subs in the game. White Bitter Marco doesn't see as much play now. He is still good, but you don't really use him that often. V2 Katakuri is still phenomenal. Cat Dog is still really, really good. And then you've got Garb. Like, Garb is definitely the, the low point of, of this list here, and I'm not really a big fan of it. And then obviously, as we said, the boosted list should have been changed here. But going on to part two. Part two, uh, we've got Kaido, Sabu and Koala, Luffy and Law, Bato Cavendish, Capone, Brook for some reason, Cracker, and then V2 Jinbei for some reason. <laughs> what? Okay, so Brook and, and Jinbei being boosted here is very, very odd. I don't understand the reasoning behind that. That's so weird. Um, but as for the other units, right, you've got Sabu, Koala, Luffy, Law, Bato, Cavendish. All of those units are like tier one and above. Amazing characters. Capone is still really good. Um, he will get better over time, but it's just that shooters are one of the worst classes in the game. For the upcoming Kizuna that's going to be uh, coming out, Capone is very, very good for that. So if you have Capone, you know, be happy about that. But comparing him to these legends here, there's no comparison. These other legends are just better. Brook is... I don't understand. Cracker is phenomenal, right? One of the best subs in the game, not only for Kaido, for this guy, Douglas Bullet. You technically, you could use him under this guy as well for, for the slasher teams. Like, uh, Cracker, even if he's not boosted on a team, he's still really good. So, the only real downsides here is Jimbei and Brook, really. Capone, you'd rather get the other guys, but Capone is still good. Cracker's amazing. Just these two guys are... Uh, why? Why are these characters here? Now, you've got your boosted rare recruits. The new batch, Kaku, Wanatsume, who's trash... Praline's very good, mind you. Um, this Peckham's is also really good. Peak is kind of trash. Sandazonia is very old and outdated. And this Jinbei is very old and outdated. I don't understand the reasoning behind these rare recruits, dude. Like, where's some of the new batch? The, the batches that people, you know, have skipped to try and pull on the anniversary, right? Because they want to try and get some new characters. Why aren't these newer units boosted? It doesn't make any sense to me. But overall, I, I'm still comparing these two parts. Like... <laughs> It's hard to compare, right? Because you've got Bullet, who's a phenomenal captain. Uh, you've got this as a phenomenal sub. But then you've got also Sabu and Koala, Luffy, Law. I think part two so far is probably still better just because Cracker is an amazing sub as well. Hypothetically, if you didn't have any units on this banner, I do think that part two looks a little better in my personal opinion just because of Luffy, Law, and Sabu and Koala. Those units are really, really nice to have and Cracker is a really good sub. But, you know, still, Bullet having Bullet is pretty nice. Having V2 Katakuri helps with a lot of content. So it's really hard to compare, right? But anyways, let's talk about the final pool of legends. So part three, limited pool legends, you've got Kaido, Stampede Luffy, Shirohoshi Man, Jerry, Sanji, Judge, V2 Big Mom, Dex, Sabo, V2 Sanji, and V2 Shanks. Now, out of all of the pool of legends, this one looks like the least exciting, but it also looks like the pool of legends that doesn't have really like a bad legend. Like, and all of these legends are really nice to have. Like, there's, no, there's none of the characters here that I'd say, oh, this unit's trash, why is he boosted? Like, all of them here are actually really nice. It's just the fact that the other characters have, like, a higher ceiling in terms of the units that they provide. 
So this this is a decent pool of legends. For myself personally, I don't own Stampede Luffy yet. I don't own Kaido yet. So technically part three is the best part for me, but I will still be doing some pulls on part one. Um, for the boosted rare recruits, the new batch of course, you've got Quick Hydrogen, um, Quick Cracker, you've got Oven, this carrot, uh, Rebecca, doesn't see much play. Beppo's got a good support. Really nice, actually, for Garp Challenge version 6. And Strength Heracles, like, no one is using Strength Heracles. Even on his release, no one was using Strength Heracles, dude. Like, what? <sighs> it's just so dumb. So, I I've been getting a bunch of questions about this specific Sugo Fest, and a lot of free-to-play players specifically have been asking, you know, I have X amount of gems, should I still pull on the anniversary Sugo Fest? Now, in my personal opinion, I think that it is still worth pulling. I don't think it's worth using all of your rainbow gems. In a hypothetical situation, let's say you had 300 rainbow gems, I would say, you know, do three multis, which is 150 gems, and then call it a day from there. You know, it is a three times legend rate, which give or take should be about 12% chance per poster to get a legend, which is very high. It's the highest rate that Global has ever had in, in terms of getting a Sugo Fest exclusive character in the middle of a multi. So saying that, I do think it is still worth doing some multis, but I don't think it's worth draining your gems for. Um, you know, in another situation, let's say you have 600 gems, maybe it's worth doing 300 gems worth and then save the other half. Maybe like spend half, save half. That's a really good way to go about it because I know a lot of people are kind of disappointed in the Sugo Fest, understandably so. So that might be a really good way to go ahead about it. Um, though, you know, if you don't have that many gems, it's completely up to you at the end of the day. The, the, the legend rate is, is why you're going to be pulling here. You're not pulling for any of these specific steps. There's no guaranteed X legend after nine multis or after six multis. You don't get a super evolution unit. There's nothing that you're aiming for here. You're basically just trying your luck, hoping to get a legend that you don't already own. That's basically it for the anniversary Sugo Fest. It is unfortunate as it is. I would have loved to have seen some special time characters. I even tweeted about this today. It would have been awesome if, you know, because there are no global first characters in this Sugo, what if they just chucked in like all of the limited rare recruits and all like the support rare recruits, just chucked them in the Sugo Fest. That would have been a really good idea as well, just to give some people some incentive to summon on this banner. Because at the moment, a lot of people are choosing to skip this banner, which it's kind of crazy for an anniversary, right? An anniversary is supposed to be a celebration for the game and not too many people are, are deciding to pull or people are actually hesitant in summoning on this banner. So it goes to show that this Sugo Fest is poorly structured because just so many players are not happy right now. Now, another thing I have to mention before we end this video about these rate boosts once again, this is absolutely crazy, right? So when you have a look at these rate boosts, you think, okay, look, it doesn't seem that amazing, but there are st some still good characters here, and I would agree. However, there are definitely some characters missing from this boosted list that I would have thought would have been boosted in this Sugo Fest. Quick Whitebeard is nowhere to be found here. Uh, Int V2 Zoro is not here. You know, you got Mihawk here. Why isn't Zoro here? It doesn't make any sense. Legend Jack is not here, and you would think that if, if there's a newer player trying to get into the game, Legend Jack is a perfect unit for them, and he's not here. Another unit that's not here, Legend Carrot. What the hell? Uh, as if Legend Carrot's not here. So those four legends are not even on this banner, and yet we have Legend Garp, Legend Brook, and V2 Jinbei. Now, I don't know about you, but Whitebeard, Zoro, Jack, and Carrot, I think are way more valuable compared to Garp, Jinbei, and Brook. That's my opinion, and I think a lot of people would agree there. And for some reason, those legends that I just said are not here. They're just not anywhere. They're not boosted. They're just regular, you know, flat rate, whatever that's going to be. So that's something that I really needed to point out because it is very absurd that legends as good as that are not going to be boosted on the anniversary Sugo Fest, and they're going to give us this crap, dude. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, what does it mean for the future, right? So the next Sugo Fest after this is likely going to be the Treasure Map Sugo Fest. Uh, Treasure Map Hawkins is the boss, and with that Sugo Fest on the Treasure Map debuts three new Treasure Map rare recruits, a Kinemon, a Riser, and a Kanjuro. And then after that, we don't know what's next. So we've got the part three to the anniversary, which is the, the part three to the um, Wano campaign. We don't have any information relating to the event or the banner. Now, I know many people are saying it's going to be a blitz battle. I personally don't think it's going to be a blitz battle considering we're going to have a farming event for part one. We're going to have a farming event with the treasure map for part two. I would hope that they're not going to go too crazy with part three. I think having a blitz battle would be the worst case scenario, especially because, um, you know, a lot of people are going to grinding hard on the, on the treasure map. And especially when you look at it right, the event should be going from March 9th to the 16th, 
blitz battles don't go for a week dude so I, I don't know maybe they if they ever did do a blitz battle for a week they could do something similar to the waifu stuff the summer stuff uh, during the new years where they have like a part one to the blitz battle and a part two to the blitz battle judging by the website it doesn't look like they're going to be doing that so i think it's going to be a week-long grinding event i don't really know how it's going to work and is it going to release some other new units on part three we don't really know at this point but anyways that's all my thoughts and opinions just kind of blurted it out there for you guys so hopefully you guys understand so to sum it all up yes i do think you should summon i don't think you should waste all your gems though and in terms of which is the best part to pull look i think part three you can't really go wrong with any of these legends here part two i think has the highest ceiling in terms of the best legends but it also has some of the worst ones because you got two really bad ones in brook and jimbei but you've also got on part one douglas bullet which is a very big draw as well as v2 katakuri so you've got some really cool stuff here on part one uh and part two and then part three is just really balanced so hopefully you guys understand and you guys get a little bit more information and more insight uh, into my opinions about the sugo fest but anyway as i said i will be live streaming the sugo fest tomorrow 1900 pst time uh on twitch.tv forward slash totski link to the stream is always down below in the description on every single video so make sure to go ahead and peek that Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today, and if you guys did, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.